All right, everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Today's video, we're looking at NHL best bets for May 24th, looking at Game 4 between the Panthers and the Hurricanes, the Eastern Conference Final, looking like it might end a lot sooner than I think a lot of people end people anticipated and with probably a different result than some people might have anticipated. Uh, the F Panthers continue to just win games at an insane rate, up 3-0, obviously won both games in Carolina, and then won their last game, game three, at home 1-0. On the back of a solid Bobrovsky performance, but definitely not like the best one we've seen from him this playoffs. I think just overall in general, there wasn't a ton of offense created. But we will get into that when we talk about Game 4 and kind of recap what happened in Game 3. But for Game 4, I have uh, a pick on the side. And then I have two player props, one from each team. So that'll be good depending on who you actually like for that game. But before we get into that, all these odds and plays are from DraftKings and BetMGM. Those have been the best odds that I've been able to find throughout the NHL playoffs. Sign up at DraftKings. You bet $5, get $150 in bonus bets. Super easy. BetMGM, you get a $1,000 first bet offer, so you can throw down a big bet if you want. BetMGM will replace that in bet credits if you don't win that. Let's get into the picks uh, for Game 4 between the Panthers and the Hurricanes. All right, so the first pick we're going to be looking at for this game, I'm going to be taking Kane's money line. I know down 3-0, it kind of seems like the obvious bet, like you think the series will at least go to Game 5. I don't want the series to end, and I, honestly, I don't think it will. Just looking back at Game 3 as well, it was different than the first two. You know, obviously, Game 1, a ton of offense, a ton of expected goals when you're looking at analytics in the box score after but it went to four overtime, so obviously that's going to make sense. Game two, a little bit different. Kachuk scored a lot e uh, quicker into overtime, but you still see that Carolina outchanced them in all situations, and especially five on five as well, a little bit closer. And then you look at this game, the expected goals are really low for both teams. Uh, Carolina just surpassed two, and then you're looking at five on five situations. Florida, less than one in five on five play, around 0 0.6, so really not creating a ton of offense. And even on the power play, their number was just under two as well. The one goal that they scored was on one like A1 scoring opportunity. Kachuk found Reinhardt right kind of in that in, in the office there, right near the slot, uh, and was able to bury on Freddie Anderson. But he had a good game as well. But Broski played well last game, as I mentioned kind of in the intro, but he surely wasn't as tested as he was in those first few games um, if you're looking at the special teams as well Florida had four power plays in game three to Carolina's just one and they were able to convert on that one scoring opportunity but overall Carolina is going to continue to I think to win the special teams battle their pe penalty kill is very good at about a 91 percent rate throughout the playoffs or 90 to 88 percent and then their power play as well I'd like to see a little bit more on five on five and we'll get into that a little bit more when we look at player props but I think it's a great price to play uh, on Carolina at plus 100 to kind of extend this series at least to make it go one more game all right so the first player prop we're going to be looking at is actually on the Florida Panthers and it's going to be Sam Bennett over two and a half shots on goal this is a guy you want to target when the Panthers have been at home throughout the through at home throughout the postseason uh, shots on goal or to get a point either or is pretty solid I feel like you might get a little bit of better price on his shots in this one looking at his home and road splits his last 11 home playoff games he's gone over this eight times so that lo even looks back at last year's playoffs briefly that Florida was in for uh, his last 10 home games overall he's gone over this seven of the last 10 times and that's over two and a half shots on goal then look at Carolina he's Carolina throughout the regular season and even in the playoffs definitely allowed the fewest shots per game and he consistently has been able to hit he's in every he's gone over this number in every single game against Carolina including the first couple games and then also the three matchups that they played against them uh, throughout the regular season. He's averaging about seven shot attempts per game in uh, in those contests as well against Carolina which is huge because as I mentioned they don't allow a ton of shots in general not even uh, if they're going to miss the net or get blocked it's just they limit they're very good at keeping wingers to the outside and just limiting any sort of chances on their goalies. He has 19 shots on goal at home through six playoff games finished with three shots on goal in their last game with seven attempts so his volume's definitely there and the line of Bennett Kachuk and now Nick Cousins continues to buzz and I think they'll continue to do that in a game where they could uh, clinch a Stanley Cup final berth. All right so the last play we're going to be looking at in game four between the Canes and the Panthers is Jordan Martinuk to get a point. An absolute star in that New Jersey series. He had three goals and 10 points in five games against the Devils so that line of himself Jesper Faust um, and then Paul Stastny really just led that team uh, to victory against New Jersey. Hasn't really been the same story against Florida, and they've definitely missed their scoring ability here on that third line. Uh, but although he hasn't produced, he's still been noticeable on the offensive end, a player that can absolutely be a, di a difference maker in an elimination game like this. Looking at his numbers and production against Florida so far in this series amongst his teammates, he's third in expected goals for only behind Sebastian Ajo and Steven Nason. Third in shots on goal and second in high danger chances for as well, tied with Sebastian Ajo. So playing on that third line as it is categorized on their depth chart, creating the same amount of quality scoring chances as the top line center and their top 
uh, point producer throughout the regular season is a huge uh, factor there. But your price for this for to get a point for Martin Nuke is at plus money when Aho is definitely not going to be at plus money. Um, and that line that he has played on in that third line with Foss and Stastny, they played the exact same amount of time on the ice in Game 3 as well. So it's, Rob Brindamore certainly isn't treating this Martin Nuke line as their third line anymore. Uh, after the New Jersey series, it's like pretty much impossible to kind of do that. Uh, Martin Nuke did step up in a big way in that Devils series, kind of out of nowhere, and he has been able to produce a similar amount of volume in this Florida series. I just, you know, Bobrovsky's a very tough goalie to solve. But I feel like in this elimination game, Martin Nuke will have a similar performance that we see in New Jersey and finally get one past uh, Sergei Bobrovsky. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of the picks for Game 4 between the Canes and the Panthers. Be sure to sign up at DraftKings or MGM if you have yet to. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.